here with Chris Beckett, who's one of our SharePoint uh, MCMs here in the Seattle area. And so, Chris, you know, we started a conversation at the Office 365 Saturday event where we were talking about uh, hybrid uh, environments that with uh, the rapid expansion of Office 365, and of course SharePoint's been a success and continues to be a success, that a lot of enterprises are now looking seriously at Office 365. And there's some, some issues with parity of the platforms and the feature set that are there, uh, and whether we're gonna see a majority of enterprises moving across to the environment. Uh, but I think we can get into the weeds on those kinds of discussions, but there's the reality is that there are a lot of enterprises and uh, small to medium sized businesses that will have, will maintain both their old SharePoint on-premise solutions or cloud-based, but sure. on-prem as well as the Office 365 and deal with the issues that are around that. So what are some of the issues that you deal with with customers and partners that you talk to? Well, so Office 365 is a shared hosting provider Right? So it's got very limited customization capabilities, um, but there's also private cloud offerings. And so you're, you're really dealing with a, a, a rich mix now of uh, on-site, on-site managed services where you still own the hardware, it's still local, but you, you've licensed with an external provider to start managing your platform for you. You've got the moving it into a private cloud and and an Office 365, which would be a public shared hosting provider. But you don't hear a lot about uh, people talking about private cloud so much. I mean, you when people talk about the cloud, I mean, you know, when marketing efforts talk about moving to the cloud, sure. they're talking about these uh, you know multi-tenant you know uh, hosted solutions like Office 365. Right. Whereas the reality is, uh, at least at the enterprise, yep. and I'll, again, I'll be clear, that's. Most of what you know, I work with my company and enterprise customers. Right. The private cloud is a is a completely different solution set than what we're talking about with from the online, the Office 365 solution. So it's all about organizations maturing up as technology and managed services improve. So private cloud. So if you're a large enterprise, you probably already invested in virtualization, and you probably already got managed data services. You probably already reorganized your IT. You've already got data center, managed data center through virtualization and those kinds of management tools. For organizations that don't have that yet, they're piggyback, they're jumping over that phase and they're moving straight to private cloud. So they're not even bothering to deploy or, or, or you know, they're, they've right now they've got scalability issues with their local on-prem, you know, that maybe it's not as managed as, as well as they want to. And so now they're looking at, well, you know, we could invest a lot more in on-prem and improving through virtualization and these kinds of tools, but that requires, you know, evaluating vendors and moving systems. There's a lot of work just in upgrading from a physical infrastructure to virtualization. They're like, hey, why don't we just go private cloud and let somebody else manage it from the get-go? So, you know, there's, there's definitely, I think there is going to be a movement, particularly for companies that are upsizing or maturing. Um, private cloud is going to become more popular. And Office 365, of course, is going to be very popular as well. So the issue with, regardless of whether you're going private or whether you're going public shared hosting, right, the idea is you're going to need multiple environments, though, because public shared hosting offers low cost, better accessibility, etc. Private cloud, though, offers you better customization, more control, Right, more ability to negotiate your SLA. Mm -hmm. Right, when you go with something like Office 365, you're going to get the same SLA pretty much everyone else is. Mm -hmm. um, with a private cloud, you can negotiate around things like you know specific requirements, uh, security compliance requirements, things like that. Um, so, you know, again, the whole idea is that organizations, it's not one size fits all. They've got different workloads. They've got different compliance and regulations they have to you know, conform to. They've got um, different mission criticality, you know, different trust and, and security and, and reliability issues. And so... Which I think is the core of it right there, right? Right. You know, it's, it, it's uh, as, as you know, we've talked about it. My, part of my, my background, I worked with a, a startup, sure. uh, you know, wow, uh, over 10 years ago, 11 years ago now. Uh, that had a, a cloud-based collaboration platform right. in the supply chain manufacturing technology space. And so most of the issues, the concerns that people had 
are all the same issues and concerns that people have now. It's not right. changed. Right. But I mean, the, the the other side of that is that the uh, the management of, and this was an issue that we didn't really address so much. We had a very limited offering in the scope of some of what's out there today. Uh, but you know, the management of those pieces, if you are maintaining that on-prem solution as well as a private cloud and are experimenting maybe with an extranet solution, right. Office 365, is you know how are you managing across those? Are they completely separate entities? What if I want to have one view of my entire world? I want to move assets or artifacts in between those environments. You know what are the options? What are the concerns? I don't know where what movement you know we see there right. in vendors and whether you know SIs consulting companies that are specializing in that and helping right. creating offerings or ISVs that are creating solutions that can see across those. So. So a few things, um, you know, enterprise architecture started to mature over the last five or six years as we came out of service-oriented architecture to the idea of the enterprise message bus. Traditional enterprises have always had issues integrating their systems, even when they were all in their OCM data center, right? right. And so point to point became very difficult to manage. And so as you moved up the enterprise chain, we started to see you know, more sophisticated enterprise messaging buses where the integration between systems is that you're observing what's going on in these different systems and you've got some sort of a centralized traffic cop, if you will, right? You've got observers, you've got agents uh, monitoring different systems and keeping other systems in check. So instead of having 15 different point to point kind of integrations, you've got one master one master integration bus. Well, you know, the great thing now is we move into cloud, that's what you're gonna have. You're gonna have best of breed service over here, best of breed service over there. You're gonna have these islands of applications which are being farmed out to different providers. Um, the great thing now is though, because you're not having to worry so much about the low level infrastructure details, you can focus on scaling up to that sort of very mature enterprise message bus because that is what you're gonna need. I mean, that's what you needed as you moved into the enterprise on premise. That's what everybody's gonna need as they move into cloud. And so I think the maturity Right now, you know, a lot of organizations have not been at the level where they've matured to having a true, you know, enterprise message bus to integrate their enterprise systems. As you move into cloud, it's going to become a necessity. And, you know, things like Azure. Azure's, right. you know, ACS system and... and yeah, I, I was just going to say, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking that, uh, so that's the vision, this a la carte model that you're able to go and pick the providers and the solutions that you want. I mean, right. The reality, though, is that there's some gaps still there. Uh, you know, you're uh, you're limited by uh, your, your the connectivity. You're limited by the parity and feature set between those. Yep. You're limited by you know, and then managing different SLAs. And I know that the tendency is of everyone to like you know single provider again, which is right. why we brought it in house in the first place again. Right. And there's this cyclical thing. So, I mean, do you see any changes there? What's different about now? Whether it was uh, you know putting everything into one massive uh, you know, data center uh, provider that had all these hosted apps, and right. that was that private cloud model, but where they tried to create uh, kind of a closed marketplace, right. versus the right. true cloud where it's open, where you can't go anywhere, but a lot of those issues remain the same. Right, so, and it does, so the problem with this is that you're really limiting yourself when you try to go with a that kind of integrated the idea that you by going with a single provider you're going to get natural integration with no effort on your part it's not governance and enterprise application integration will always be firmly with the individual enterprise and so as you start integrating you different, different you mean take you have to take ownership you have right you now. have to take ownership and right now that's the whole right now because organizations are spending so much time just managing the infrastructure for individual apps this is the whole some organizations have have established architectural teams and have moved toward enterprise management enterprise app integration and a, and a governance model across it all um, but, but smaller organizations that haven't had those resources have, have lagged behind. Mm -hmm. Now that we're going to the cloud, it means everybody is going to be playing in that space, large and small. And I really see that that's where the vendor value add is going to be when they start creating platforms that allow you to plug in these different cloud offerings, but also decide to move. I mean, one of the problems you have with a cloud provider is portability. Mm -hmm. 
them, right? Once you pick one, it's how hard is it to get off them? And as soon as you start doing point-to-point -point integration between cloud solutions, you are going to get a brittle enterprise architecture. So by having a centralized governance, by having a centralized enterprise application architecture integration built with a centralized bus, you can port one particular payload into a different cloud offering and you're not going to break the integration with everything else. And so again, I just think that again, a small set of enterprise organizations have been able to move towards that. Now I think everybody is going to be piling on because it's now a necessity, big and small. And I think vendors are going to pile in there and start creating much, much more mature offerings in the enterprise application integration management and governance space. To me, that's the future, right? That's where the value add is going to be because we've, we've commoditized out the infrastructure and platform as a service offerings. And now it's really, look, as an enterprise, as a business, I need to integrate all these disparate technologies to serve my business process. And that's the piece that you still have to firmly own. I think that there's a, I mean, I use some people look at this as this where the opportunity is for ISVs and SIs to come in to help sort that out because there right. will, will be a weeding process. Right. You're going to have every vendor, everybody with an idea of what to do and how to do it in right. there and you've got just like uh, you know the, the app market for right. mobile phones, for smartphones, right. as you have this huge deluge of crapware that's right. dumped into that and what you know kind of uh, rises to the top of the pile those right. those golden you know apps that everybody uses right. i think it's going to be the same thing it's the the painful part will be we have to go through the cycle that cycle of discovery right. you know within this this phase it's, it's interesting well and you're going to see a lot of low fidelity solutions that continue to surface point to point yeah the point to point integration between two particular services and they're going to pollute the you know pollute the marketplace but it's going to be the vendors that can bring up the more sophisticated platforms Platforms that can plug and play between a lot of different offerings, right? Synchronizing data, synchronizing content, structured and unstructured, synchronizing taxonomy, observing transactions, and being able to propagate, you know, and initiate action and enter enterprise workflow, you know, around that. So, you know, this has been a long time coming, but I think now it's it's going to become it's going to become a capability that gets pushed down into mid and smaller businesses where they've never had that capability, that level of sophistication before. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you know um, this is becoming more of a necessity as part of the movement to the cloud, I just, again, I just think everybody's going to benefit from this. Everybody, you know, uh, traditionally um, it would be the larger enterprises that could only take advantage of that. What we see with the movement to commoditize cloud-based offerings, again, lower, smaller companies are able to take advantage of higher capability. The same features. And so, uh, you know, where I know that you're writing a lot on this topic. You, you, people are able, able to go out and find some content, some other writings, any white papers or articles on this out on your site? Or, um, well, yeah, I just um, just authored a, um, a governance guide for hybrid migrations with Quest, mm -hmm. um, and it basically touches on some of the fundamental sort of governance things you need to consider. I mean, we are we are still in the dark ages. Yeah. You know, um, for example, Office 365 now really has no baked in. Uh, hybrid um, capabilities. When you run SharePoint on-premise and you run Office 365, they are by nature separate islands. And yet that's not what biz businesses need. Um, you are going to need, again, to take that, uh, that, that ownership of, well, I need governance and I need integration, and that means I have to make the decisions about what capabilities I use in one environment, whether it's a private cloud or on-premise, what capabilities or workloads I want to use Office 365 for, I need to push that out, communicate it to my people, and I'm going to need some, in, some manual integration. I'm going to need to be able to copy taxonomies back and forth. I'm going to need to be able to make sure from a compliance and data security that I've got policy being consistently applied in both environments right, right? all of these things don't go away right. and so again I think in that space is where uh, vendors um, are going to be filling in and building better tools that help you apply consistent policy and monitoring and governance and compliance across different offerings and but but we are really at the beginning phases of that yeah definitely agree on that well you know thanks a lot for taking the time and uh, you know, again, if you want to uh, follow Chris, he's out SharePoint Bits, and uh, it was where you blog as well. Yeah, blog.sharepointbits.com, and you can find me on Twitter, SharePoint Bits. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Right.